a pro. Okay. Now, I prefer the term price levels than support and resistance. Same thing. But a lot of people get confused with the term support and resistance. The reason being is what was once support can now be resistance. What was now resistance can now be support. And most of us, I just call them all support resistance. I just, you know, that's what's going to hold up the price and resistance is where price is going to have a problem going through. So the best way I can explain it to you is to think of these levels as floors on an elevator. Support is what's below your feet. It's holding you up. To go to your next level, you have to break through this, the ceiling. So that's your resistance. But that's what happens when the elevator is moving up. When the elevators move through that floor and up to that new next floor, what happens? That ceiling under your feet is now what's supporting you and you have the next CLA to go through. So what was your resistance before is now your support. And when the elevator turns around to come down, you're moving in the opposite direction. So what's to go down farther, you have to break through that floor. So what is it? It's your resistance. And every time you jump on that floor and you bounce back up and hit your head on the ceiling, it's your support. Okay, so it just becomes reversible and it flips over and back and forth. Now, the prices don't change. So old resistance can become the new support. What's important is to know the next level as price is moving above and below that are going to be significant in that venture, in that move of price. Now, the creation of support and resistance levels in the forex market happen as price moves up and then bounces higher and it creates support. As the market moves higher and then it rotates lower, it creates resistance. So if you imagine that price moves in when it's trending up or trending down or when it's also moving sideways, makes peaks and valleys. These peaks and valleys are not that crucially important right now, but they will become your future support and resistance levels because support and resistance doesn't change continuously. These are levels where the price has had a difficult time going through in the past and moving, going into the future where it might have a problem going through. So as price is moving up that elevator, if you've done your proper historic analysis and you've got, okay, say we have a, oh, let's take a four-story building. We got an elevator in this four-story building, okay? Now, in this building, you sit back and you, you learn about the building, just like you learn about price. You, and you do this mostly as an observation, you realize this is a big building. It covers a square block. It's an office building. Okay? And it sits above the subway stop. So in the morning at rush hour, there's tons of people around the building coming in now the subway stop. So what happens is the ground floor is very, very busy. And that ground floor is full of convenience stores, cigar and cigarette shops, there's coffee shops, donut shops. And there's a lot of traffic there, but they're not getting on the elevator because they have nothing to do with the rest of that building. Now you see that there's two elevators in the far side of that building and you, you observe and you see that there's four floors. So you go over and you go for a ride on the elevator. But remember your price, you don't have hands. So you watch as that elevator moves and it moves up and the door opens on the first floor and you see, ah, Look at that, it's dark wood and carpeting. And you can see all these doctors and lawyers' names on the sign. And you can see it's, it's office built, it's offices, but high-end offices. The elevator door closes again, and it moves up to the next level. And you can see again, it's more offices. Moves up to the next level, and you see this is conference rooms, because you can see the sign 
with conference room one, conference room two, even see the schedule with the schedules, you know, of what what's going on, where and when. And then it goes up to the next floor, and you see that storage, and you can see all, you know, as you're seeing the signs. And they, I'm sorry if it's getting boring. Goes up to the next level, which is the roof deck, and it opens up this beautiful roof deck with smoking areas and vending machines and tables and chairs and all these sliding doors that open onto these balconies so people can go out and smoke. Okay. You've learned about the asset. Now, once you've learned about that asset, you can start applying some other pieces of information from your study. Okay. Because you're there at rush hour in the morning, everybody's coming in from the, you know, the subways and the, you know, whatever, and going to work. So that elevator is gonna start getting busy with the people coming to work that work in floors number one and two. You notice when you went and stopped on floor number three where the conference rooms were, there was no conferences scheduled in the morning, but still there was nobody coming to that conference so the people come and set them up and get them ready. And who's gonna be going up and using the coffee machine, the vending machines and smoking cigarettes, but the employees that are coming to work. So you can now judge by the time of day and the flow of people, what are the odds or the probability of that elevator when it shuts, stopping at the first floor, stopping at the second floor, stopping at the third floor, stopping at the roof deck? No, by just observation, we have observed that most likely every time that elevator gets, goes, you know, full, it's full of people, it's gonna stop on the first floor, then go up to the second floor. It's most likely to come down from the second because there's gonna be nobody on the third and the fourth floor. You know, after a few people have gotten in, there's a good probability it'll go through past the third floor and go up to the roof. If it goes up to the roof, it's gonna bring those people where they're smoking on the roof back down to the first and second floor. The flow of traffic is into the building, not out of the building. But by historic observation, you've made these understandings. Well, that's what support and resistance is. It's absor observing the asset, looking back historically, finding levels where the elevator might stop but there's no guarantee the elevator will stop there. And then finding these levels of support and resistance or price levels. So there are areas where the price found difficulty to cross upward or downward in the past. And by knowing the personality of the asset, by understanding the time of day, which isn't really the time of day, which has an effect on the markets, but it's, it, you know, in the, this, this period of this asset and how it's moving, we can then determine something. And when we do this, we can use this to start helping us find entry points and exit points to the market, make trading decisions. Because what you see right here is simply, historically, we saw the elevator go up to the first floor, back down to the ground floor, back to the first floor, down to the ground floor, back to the first floor, down to the ground floor. Now, it went straight up to the second floor here. Okay, Didn't even stop on the first floor. Quite possible, right? Because the people that were filling that elevator were going to the second floor offices. Came back down to the first floor, bounced back to the second floor, back down to the first floor, back up to the second floor, and then probably came back down the ground and then made a trip up to the roof. Now, if we imagine, just keep imagining that this is the elevator, when we start at the ground level and move up, we could, as we move through the first floor and got up to the second floor, we could decide, ah, the odds are in our favor, it's gonna go back down to that ground floor again, okay? So if we were to put a stop loss to say it's not gonna climb any higher, we'd put it slightly above that second floor. Where would we wanna enter our order? Slightly after it bounced off that second floor and it looked like it was returning to that ground floor. And if we were on that elevator and there were no people on there, that was empty, 
what are the odds that it's going to continue down and not stop on one and go right down to the ground level? Bounces off that ground level, starts moving back up. We would buy it and start to climb. Went right past that first floor, but stopped here for a brief second at the first floor. But do we jump out that elevator or do we wait for it to go up to the second floor? When it comes down from the second floor. So if you stop getting, if you don't make very difficult assumptions and make very difficult analysis, you can see and understand support and resistance or these price level or floors. You can call them floors as prices moving up. Where, what floor do you expect it to go to? Now, one of the best ways, because now you say to me, how do I get these floors? Well, there's many ways to get these because you can't just look back at price and see it's a four floor built, four story building. Now you can get these from recent swing lows and swing highs as prices moving up because the price is trending up or trending down. It should be making new higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Then we can get them also from what's called pivot points. Okay, I throw that all out into never, never. There's also other ways you can get it off of trend lines. You can get it off of uh, moving averages. I get my support and resistance levels by what I call eyeballing. It's using your eyeballs and doing the work. Because when you go locate these on historic charts and looking at charts historically to see where, where price had acted and reacted at the specific levels, you have a better understanding of how that asset is going to do it. Okay. Now, let me pop up a live chart here for you. Okay, this is the live Euro US dollar chart. I'm not pushing the Euro US dollar. This is my standard teaching chart. And actually, we, I use a 30 minute chart. Now, on this 30 minute chart, we see the price of the Euro, which has been tumbling to a long term low. The Euro is all the way down at 108 and change and going lower and lower and lower. Now, we would like to know if the Euro is going lower. What level will it go down? Where is the ground floor? If it pops back up and goes back up to the first floor, what's the first floor? Okay. Now, across my chart, you see all kinds of colored lines. Now, these colored lines weren't drawn on this chart today. They were drawn a very long time ago. And these price levels go on forever into the future. These are levels that when the euro was trading at this precise, this price level before that had a, these were the floors and the ceilings and the floors that, that it exhibited in its previous trading at this point. Now, I didn't draw these on here today because once you've drawn your levels of support and resistance on your chart, they stay good for a, forever and ever and ever. You can see, here we go. We're all the way back up here, 110. These are the levels when the price was trading at 110 the last time. If I keep going back, you see all of these prices that are drawn on my chart. You don't stop and draw them minute by minute, hour by hour. Once you've created them for your charts, the only time you have to add more is when price is trading at an area that it hasn't been added a long time. Now, I'm going to share with you a presentation to show you how to do this in a second. But also, one of my key ways of doing this is I also do what we call, I color code and mark my levels of support and resistance. Okay. So like you see down here at the bottom, you see wide dashes, you see short dashes, you see dots, you see different colors. Because I want to know how long ago those prices were valid to the market. Okay. So I have my, and there's no system. It's just the way you would come up with it. Okay. Because if this price wasn't, is a year old price, okay, I need to know has it hit that price and paid no attention to it in the, you know, the more recent past. Now look at this blue line. This is where the euro is trading right now, or the area that its prices come down to. 
we have the blue, the red, and the gold. No, like I said, there was no reason. These were not put on the chart simultaneously. They had nothing to do with one another. But look at this as the euro plummeted down. Look how significant this blue line was in its movement. Whether that's a line of support or resistance, who the hell knows how it was created. What we do know is as price is falling down, it should have been a level of support. And what it did is supported the price here, here, and here, and here. So what it did is it told us in advance that we should expect some type of action when it gets to that level. Now, it doesn't mean the price can't sail right through it. Then the gold line came back from a long time ago. I think it was almost two years ago. And it had some support and price congested around that because the euro has hardly ever traded at this low. So there's not much we can get from it. As we go back and look at a one day chart, and this is only what we see on our charts. Okay, When we see it a one day chart, we can see the lowest the euro was, was today, but we haven't seen it in this range since October. And then going back before October, we haven't even seen it in this range over to January 19, 2019, over a year ago. So we would have to keep going back and back and back. And the last time it was really at this level was January of, of 2019. That's over a year and a month ago. Then we'd have to go back and back. But you see where these lines started getting drawn on the charts? See how some of these lines were drawn forward from all that long time ago, but they stay, oops, let me lock my drawings here. They stay valid on your charts because they will have validity when price moves there the next time. So that's, and then the easy way to do this is to look at a one hour, one day chart because that covers a lot longer period. Take out the more important areas, then come down to a four hour chart, take out those areas and go back to a one hour chart and then put them on your charts. So when we move this to a one hour chart, okay, the only ones that we're seeing are the ones that are here now, but there's a ton of them up above because they, they were drawn on here when, when price was trading much higher way back when. So the only ones we need to deal with right now, are the, now these become part of the strategy, okay? But you have to understand the basis of where all this is coming from. Because until you do the work and get these on your charts properly, you have no idea what price is gonna do. And so again, I throw out the words necessary support and resistance because I intermix them all the time. My brain knows exactly what, we could call them levels we could call them price levels we can call them floors whatever you want to call them it's just on the adventure of your asset on its journey what are the floors and ceilings above and below so imagine we've got a you know a 50 story building with elevators all over the place going up and down 50 stories you can't do what i did with the four story building and you're on that elevator. You have no idea if you're down at the bottom of that elevator, or the top of the elevator. You're riding up and down it. So you need to know what the possibility of the floors above and your, below your head, or where that elevator is going to stop most likely next on that big journey. Because look at this. We have this beautiful downtrend of the euro, US dollar. I mean, it was easy. <laughs> this was easy, easy peasy trading. Look what happened here. Look what happened here. Look what happened here. Look what happened here. You know, we can actually watch the push, the ease, the push, the ease, push and ease. Push. I mean, it's continually making lower lows and lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. It is the perfect trading tool, okay? We've got our moving average crossovers. We got everything. This was a, uh, an actual beautiful move of the Euro US dollar. And it's as pretty picture perfect as you can get. Now, 
we can move it to a smaller time frame chart to see more precisely. And see, this will help us get entry and exit points. I mean, look at our moving average crossover right here. Told us to sell. Told us to sell right there. We could have waited till it got here because we wanted to see if it bounced off of resistance. Remember, we also have to determine whether it's long enough, the price movement is long enough or the target's far enough away that it's worth trading. Once it broke this support line or resistance line or price line or level or floor, we could have gone in with a short trade and we would have had a beautiful trade all the way down here. Or we could have entered at the crossover and monitored it very, very closely and you know, moved our stop losses based on our support and resistance. But look at this, when price fell, congestion here fell below that. Look at this. Then it stayed crosswise here, finally broke, and look at this, came to the next level, the next floor, and it's glided across there. Now, the key is finding these levels to support and resistance trading. So let me get some of this cleaned up. So let me share with you a little presentation. It's almost as boring as this part of my presentation, but this is the work part. This is what you gotta do, okay? Once you do it, you really understand an asset. And once you've done it once for your asset, like I said, unless it moves radically, you know, up to 113 again, but when you get back to the 113, 132, 135, you've got all those lines from historically when it traded this, or you have those lines drawn on when the price was coming down because the price is, the, the levels still hold when the elevator is going up. So let me share with you, there's a little presentation here, and we're gonna show you how to start this off properly and put all these lines on your chart. And then from there, we're gonna talk about adding it into your trading strategy. So let's start with what support and resistance is. I think when a lot of traders think of support and resistance, they think of pinpoint lines on a chart that try to predict where the price will turn on a dime. But it's more complex than that. Let's start with the basics. Support and resistance refers to the technical analysis of price areas where the price action will potentially pause and change direction in any given market. If there is a price area below the current price action that has the potential to stop the price falling further and change its direction, we call this support. If there is a price area above the current price action that has the potential to stop the price rising further and change its direction, we call this resistance. Price can and does break through these price areas all the time. Typically, when price breaks through a particular price area that has been identified as either support or resistance, it will become the opposite to what it was before. So if price is rising and it breaks through an area of resistance, that resistance area now becomes a support area for the price. And the same is true in reverse. If a price is falling and it breaks through an area of support, that support now becomes a resistance area for price. There are different types of support and resistance levels, and I like to split them up into two categories. Static support and resistance and dynamic support and resistance. Static, as the name suggests, are support and resistance areas that don't move. They are identified by the specific price level that the historical price action has shown them to be at. This is the main type of support and resistance people know and refer to when they talk about it. Dynamic support and resistance is the opposite. It refers to support and resistance levels that move. They are not at a fixed price. I use two types of dynamic support and resistance areas as part of my trading strategy, which are daily pivots and moving averages. And these levels change regularly. Daily pivot levels are specific levels of support and resistance that change on a daily basis. So I will have a set of daily pivot levels plotted on my chart on the Monday, and then these levels will change on the Tuesday. Monday's pivot levels are now no longer of interest to me on Tuesday, as all the levels have changed. Moving average levels are dynamic as well, as they are constantly changing with the formation of every candlestick. Dynamic support and resistance levels, such as daily pivots and moving averages, usually plot themselves through indicators within a charting platform. So if you add the daily pivots and the moving averages to your chart, 
the levels will update as soon as they need to. Static support and resistance areas usually have to be identified and plotted manually, so let's look at how we do this. We can identify these price areas by looking at the historical price action on our charts. We are looking for price areas where the price has been heading in a particular direction and then has stopped and reversed in the other direction. Equally, we can spot an area of support or resistance if the price has been heading in a particular direction and has paused for a significant amount of time before breaking through the area and continuing in its original direction. Sadly, support and resistance areas aren't as clean in reality as demonstrated by these illustrations. So let's jump up to the charts and look some real life examples. OK, so here we have the daily chart of the FTSE 100. And as you can see, currently the price is up at the 7300 level and has spent the last couple of months around the 7000 level. Now to demonstrate how to identify and plot support and resistance areas, I'm going to scroll back on the chart to the last time the price was in the same region as it is now. This way we can use the support and resistance areas we plot from the previous price action to see if they have any significant impact on this price action that's happened over the last few months. So I'm going to draw two red lines, one above this price action and one below. Very quickly. There we are. Now we want to scroll back and find the last time that the price was between these two lines so we can use it to identify and plot the support and resistance areas for this price region. So if we scroll back, we find that the last time price was in this particular region was sort of December, January to August 2016. So in order to start plotting the support and resistance areas, we first need to identify where they are. And as I said in the video previously, we need to spot the points where price has had a significant reaction. And to do this, we want to find where price has either been heading in a particular direction, has stopped and reversed, like here, or where it has stalled for a significant amount of time before either breaking through a particular area or reversing. So this area here, for example. And to plot these areas, I'm going to take my circle tool and I'm just going to first pick out all the reactions that I can see on this particular region of price action. So as I said before, I'm just picking out all the reactions where price has either reversed or stalled and I'm just highlighting them so I can see them more easily. Fantastic. Okay, and now to plot the areas, I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to work my way down the chart until I come to a reaction point. So the first reaction point I come to is this one here. And I want to encapsulate this reaction with the two lines. So I want to take the highest point the reaction occurs and I want to try and place my line at the lowest point where the reaction occurs. And then once I've done that, I can delete my circle. So here we have our first support and resistance area. And then all we're going to do is work our way down the chart, picking out these reaction points, their lowest and highest levels, another one here, another one here. This one has more than just a one reaction from it which is fantastic as it gives this particular area a little bit more weight in future use. If we come down a bit further, we've got this one here. This is there. Actually, this one could probably come a little bit lower and encapsulate that reaction as well. And then we've got one down here, there, another one here, to there, and then we've got another one. I think you get the drift of it, because like I said, it's very long and boring. But once you have them all on your chart, you just line them all off. If there's zones that you don't have anything, go back to a longer chart. 
and you'll eventually fill them in and that's how you'll have your chart set up and those lines automatically in your charts will continue out into the future. So now that we know the role of support and resistance lines, which from now on we will call zones, okay, that's because the support and resistance are not a given line. Now if you notice, there was nothing scientific. It was just by observation. And that's what's important. If you go back, now there are true numeric values that are very specific. Like we just saw Bitcoin soar through 10,000. 10,500 becomes a psychological, and these are psychologicals. Gold at 1,500, gold at 1,550. Whole numbers tend to be that. Numbers where assets haven't gone. Now we're talking about the lowest point the euro's been. So that these are key specific numbers because they are psychological. But the rest of the levels or the zones are simply a zone that we've gotten through observation. So don't say that you're going to buy the euro at 102.49 because that's where the support line is. Okay, The support line is because now that we trade in all these digits to the right, they're not going to ever be exact. So remember, they, they are zones. In fact, some people draw a line, two lines, and then fill them in and make them the zone. But there are more like zones that can be breached and pushed into. The trend may pull the price action back out of it. And, the, and maybe price action will succeed in breaking it for good. Because a lot of times you'll see price move through and you might have candles that broke the support and resistance line, but bodies, and we want to look at the bodies where the close was or the open was on the support and resistance level, not just the push throughs. And if it just happened to close a point, a couple points below or above, it hasn't violated that zone. So this support and resistance zone strategy will enable you to take trades at the area that price should reverse. Trading support and resistance lines are critical for every trader to implement into their system. No matter how you're going to trade, no matter what strategy you trade, support and resistance levels should be ultimately important to you. I'll show you. Hold on a second, I'll pop up some charts here again. Now, this chart. Is every morning I write some technical analysis for you know, a couple of brokers, and I am responsible for writing them, and I use support and resistance in my analysis. Okay. Now, if you notice, I saw uh, this is Bitcoin, and I have all my charts, here, and I've developed my t today's expected trading range based on a combination of things, but based on these support and resistance zones. And you can see in this trip of Bitcoin, as it's been traveling up, how important these levels have been all along its move. Now it's moving to 10.5. Hasn't been there in a very, very, very long time. But you see my blue arrow, that's the intended today's expected range when I wrote this analysis this morning. And you can see how price is traded right in that expected range the entire day. And we combine that with clues like we'd have below MACD. I've got on there my trend lines. And all of these start adding significance. And because remember, there's only so much you can put in. I've seen some charts that have so much information, so many indicators, so many outsides, so many drawings all over the place. Can't make heads or tails. But the fact is, what is it giving you? All you need a chart to tell you is the direction you think the asset is going to go, where you would want to enter the market, where you want to put your stop loss, and where your target point would be. So having charts that got a billion lines on them, it not happen. So I use support and resistance. I combine it with client, you know, um, chart patterns and moving averages. And I have a very basic system that's right more than it is wrong. Because what am I looking for? a clue to what the market is telling me. I need to interpret what price is trying to tell me as it's moving. So a basic guide, actually I've got a little presentation I'm gonna put up for you, but it's, it's being able to see and combine it with other indicators. So for step one, is first find the support and resistance areas. 
like right, you know, draw them off on your charts. Okay. Once we've had these, we can then see where history might repeat itself. And make sure you leave space between your zones. As any drawing, as drawing many lines will confuse you and worsen your trading decision. Step two, you want to identify the strength of those support and resistance zones and have several different assets that you have all of these looked up. Basically, the higher time frames take less time and attention than the smaller time frames. Alternatively, the smaller time frame has more signals as the zones may get hit more often. You would want to use those like I showed you in a one day chart, a four hour chart, a one hour chart, then a 30 minute chart because you want to see what range you want to, for our type of trading. We want to look at a one hour chart to understand what the zone might be, then go down to a 30 minute chart to make our decision whether we're going to buy or sell, and then a 15 minute chart to look at what zones are to determine what price we're going to enter the market and what we, you know, and when we're going to exit the market, what about our stop loss? So one's environmental, two is determining direction, and three is the final parts of your trading. So then what we want to do is once we've isolated these zones is actually implementing this, the, the, the strategy. The third step of the strategy is to wait for a candle that hits the zone to close. Okay. This will indicate the, the signal candle that we were waiting for. So as price is moving up or down and comes to a zone, we want the first candle that's hit that zone and wait for it to close. This is telling us something. We need to see whether it's a bullish or a bearish candle. Is it strong or weak? Is it big or long or short? Does the Did it have long wicks or short wicks or no wicks at all? Once you determine that type of candle, what we're looking for is a candle that came down and touched that, strat, that support line or went up and touched the resistance line. But we need to know what type of candle we're looking at. So was it a strong candle? Was it a weak candle? Big body candles are strong. Now, small body candles are indecision and weak. So, what we want to do is qualify the candle. We want to look for a long body that formed after a previous touch the level but could not break it. So, entirely, we've taken two previous candles. We would like to see the most candles that have come down to that support line and has been held by that support line. Then we'd like to see a candle in the opposite direction. That's a, a strong candle. And then once it, that strong candle develops because it was rejected, it was supported by that support, we would want to go in and enter into the marketplace. So step four is to identify. The fourth step is identify where you will enter the trade. If you want this to happen at the pivot point or the turning point, and then where we want to develop, where we want to exit that trade, where we want to put our stop loss for that trade, all based on that candle. So we want to draw our zones. We want to wait for price to come to those zones. We want to wait for this, the candle. We want to identify when we'll enter the, the trade. And then lastly, identify when we will exit that trade. So now that we've learned about, from this about the support and resistance strategy, now I'm going to share with you. I put this in a couple of PowerPoint slides, and I'm going to share it with you. And it, it doesn't have any words. Just watch what's happening. And it's got text on the, on the screens. and watch it step by step it's only one minute long but i've shown you this in real action so it's easier to see it when it's really happening so let me share that with you and then also if you notice on your screen there's a little place that says handouts and i put together a little handout for you that goes over all of this so just click the download button download it and read it later but it'll go over all this and show you how to use this in the
So I'll repeat that for you again so you can watch it and take some notes as it's going across your screen. As you saw, so as you saw, trading support and resistance and discovering support and resistance zones are pivotal to your trading success. They're not very difficult. You can master them in no time at all. Okay. And you should be using support and resistance zones in any type of trading, but they make a great little trading strategy all on their own. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. If you have any questions, go to www.alvexo.com and look in their education center and all of your questions will be answered right there. So have a great night. Thank you for supporting investing.com and thank you for supporting Alvexo. Have a great night now.